Hello everyone. Thank you for joining our webinar. Just let's just wait for like a few seconds before we can kick this off. And welcome to our webinar Turn PPT CSVs PDFs into AI accessible data with unstructured.io. My name is Yukti Devedi and I'll be your moderator today. One of my main jobs here at Single Store is to organize weekly AI webinars. We organize two or three webinars per week. We demonstrate different data and AI use cases, new tools and technologies. I also post about our upcoming webinars every week. So if any of these topics are interesting to you, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn uh, to stay on top of the loop. I'd also like to hear your feedback or ideas on the topics that you would like to see in future sessions. So speaking of future sessions, we've got amazing sessions coming up this week. So tomorrow we will present six days to single store conveyors, Rockset migration journey. So it, this is like a very trending topic these days that OpenAI acquired Rockset and the customers were like left in a big fix that what to do. And they were like giving a deadline, like, you know, till September, something like that. So it just took one of our customers to... Uh, six days just to migrate to their entire data set to our platform. So do feel free to check it out if any one of you is in a similar situation like this. So uh, the other webinars are also displayed on your screen. Please feel free to scan the QR code. This will directly take you to the landing page and will let you register. It just takes like few seconds. Uh, on July 18th, we have how to do full text search with single store. And on July 22nd, we have single store as the best operational DB for AI, where we will see, compare the different transaction times and uh, with different databases. And I think we have Pranav as the speaker who is a uh, part of single product management team at single store. So coming back to today's topic, you're welcome to participate in the discussion throughout the session using the Zoom Q&A button. It is present at the bottom of your console. We have an internal mission statement to try to answer 100% of the audience questions, even if that means following up with people afterwards via email. This has gotten a little difficult over time because sometimes we have a lot of questions that we can take up live, but uh, just... We are absolutely up to the challenge. Just ask away. We just make sure that you have logged into Zoom using your actual name and your email address because we will not be taking up any anonymous questions. So moving on to the exciting part, we would love you to try out today's technology. So anyone who tries it today will be entered for a chance to either win branded new AirPods Pro or Meta's new Ray-Ban LLM smart glasses. It's absolutely the winner's choice. Simply click the link that's present on your screen, scan the QR code. It will just take you to the single store's sign up page and it will just take a few seconds. It's a free trial. You can just sign up and follow along with the webinar. I will post the code to the demo and it will be a real time experience for everyone. Makes it much more dynamic. So so that you can, you know, uh, utilize this resource even more. So uh, we have also announced a new free share tier, which you might see on the landing page, which uh, I think Akmal will talk about a bit later today. Moving forward, let me announce today's speaker today. We have Akmal, Chaudhary and Maria. Welcome both of you. Thanks for joining. So uh, Akmal is a senior technical evangelist here at Single Store with a strong expertise in big data and machine learning and AI. Uh, he is a very regular speaker at our VT webinars. You might have seen him answering your questions with guest speakers. And we also have Maria, who is a staff developer advocate at Unstructured IO, is actually an expert when it comes to databases. And I'm very happy to have her here as our guest speaker today. And uh, welcome, Akmal and Maria. I believe, Akmal, you have the floor first. Thank you so much. I'll go down now. Great. Well, thank you for that, uh, Yuxi. And thank you all very much for joining. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. As I always do around about this time, I just check my uh, phone here. So it's just gone 6 p.m. my time here in London. Uh, and uh, something that worth adding to what Yukti mentioned in terms of the events that we have this week, uh, um, if any of you are attending We Are Developers uh, conference in Berlin uh, this week, uh, I'll be there running a couple of workshops on the Thursday and the Friday. So we'll be looking at how to use single stores vector search and uh, picking a problem um, from the real world, which is kind of recommender systems. OK, so uh, we'll be evaluating using the surprise library. So if if uh, you are planning to attend, look forward to that. You know, come up and say hello and uh, meet us there. We've got a booth as well. OK, meet the team. OK, so uh, very quickly, two standard slides. If you're a regular, you know, I just quickly uh, present uh, uh, something from a sort of a business perspective, if you like, and something from a bit more sort of technical perspective on single store, the company and the product. So uh, we actually do have quite a bit of pedigree and history. So founded way back here, 2011. 
and we're all the way up to 2024 now. And a couple of uh, things along the way. So historically, in the early days, the company and the product used to be called MemSQL, focusing very much on OLTP. Uh, subsequently, added support for Column Store and OLAP here, as you can see, way back 2015, 2016 sort of time frame. And uh, something else worth noting is that Vector Search has been in the product actually for quite some time since 2017. Right? A very popular topic these days, uh, uh, as you know, uh, practically everybody has got vector capability now. Uh, so, you know, whether you're using a, a pure vector database or, uh, you know, perhaps relational technology with uh, vector capability, you know, it's pretty much there. But uh, the point I was trying to make here is that single store has had that for some time. It's not something we added recently. It's uh, been used by customers in anger, you know, building real production systems. So we have some uh, experience and history with that. Okay, so uh, two quick uh, stats there. So we are now a 100 million uh, US dollar ARR company and over 350 global customers. And uh, if you look along the bottom there, you can see that some of the investors there, okay, so these uh, companies, some of them actually, I think, started off as customers and subsequently liked the product and uh, invested as well. Okay, and then the... Uh, Second slide, just a little bit of an architectural overview, kind of high level view, if you like, of what the product is. So we've talked about the uh, OLTP, OLAP, and this is combined into this concept called universal storage now. So a single table type to handle both of these requirements. We have uh, strong integrations with a variety of technologies. So in the past, we have covered things like Kafka, for example. Okay, I demonstrated Spark. Uh, and actually be doing a little bit of Spark at uh, We Are Developers this week as well. And uh, if you want to bulk load from other sources such as uh, S3 or HDFS, Hadoop, that's possible too. So the animation here really showing this uh, concept of pipelines, the ability to really ingest data at scale in parallel into the uh, single store environment. Uh, we work on the three big cloud providers. Okay, so AWS, Google Cloud, Microsoft Azure. Uh, you can run on-prem as well. And uh, although not shown here, there's actually a hybrid approach as well, which is kind of interesting. So part of your architecture, your infrastructure can run locally within your environment, <clears throat> excuse me, and part of it can run in the cloud. That could uh, be very useful for some scenarios. Uh, there's a Docker container as well, if you're interested. But I think the quickest and easiest way to get your hands on is uh, really sign up, follow the link that Yukti has shared in the chat there, Okay, literally, it'll take less than a minute of your time. Um, and that's a really quick and easy way because nothing to install. Everything is browser-based. Uh, historically, then, of course, it is a relational database management system. That's where it's come from. But there is support for these rich data types, you know, geospatial, for example, time series. Again, we've uh, demonstrated these in past webinars. Uh, JSON support has been there for some time. Even better now with that single store Kai. Okay, so this is MongoDB compatibility. And it's worth adding that the product is both MySQL wire compatible and MongoDB wire compatible. Um, full text search through the Lucene full text engine. Okay, and of course vectors, okay. Last but not least, um, possibly one of the more important uh, aspects. Uh, and so one of the arguments and uh, you know, one of the points that sometimes people raise is, okay, you know, how are you different from these uh, uh, vector databases of today? Well, this is really it. I mean, if you look at all the capabilities, the integrations um, and the environments that we are tend to be used in, okay, enterprise environments, large customers, small, medium customers, and even some small ones, uh, but typically used in, in, in a way where they take advantage of all of these capabilities, okay? So we have customers doing geospatial, for example, we have uh, utilization of full text, uh, there are large customers out there deploying with vectors, um, and but they can do other things with the product as well. So it's not just a simply one trick pony. Uh, other things, real time decisions, AI apps, dynamic experiences, uh, dashboards. So if you use Tableau, for example, or uh, um, you, know, you know anything that's JDBC or ODBC compatible, very easy to plug in and utilize. Uh, I use MetaBase. Uh, it's a jar file, the, you know, the open source free version, download it, just need Java. And within a couple of minutes, you can be creating nice visualizations. Uh, the other thing to note is that within the single store platform now, 
uh, you have Jupyter notebooks built in, okay, and Python and SQL. And that's what I'll actually be using uh, later this week at the uh, conference in Berlin. And we use that very frequently in a lot of our online webinars. Uh, and so with that, I will stop at this point and uh, Yukti and I will be there to help out with the questions. So let me stop the share, okay, and hand over to Maria, who will now guide us through and take us through her presentation, um, looking at uh, the capabilities of unstructured. Okay, so there we go. Thank you. Let me just share my screen. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Maria. I have already been introduced, but there was a small mistake. I'm not an expert in databases. I'm an expert in machine learning and data preprocessing. Just to clear this up, if you have a very, very nuanced, complicated questions on databases internals, that's probably not where my expertise shine. But if you have any questions th throughout the presentation about data preprocessing, LLMs, embeddings, RAG applications, Gen AI, just throw it in the chat and um, I'll do my best to answer them. So with that, let's just get into the presentation. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about transforming your unstructured data into a JSON format that is gonna be usable for all kinds of Gen AI applications. RAG, for example, this is one of the most common uh, use cases for unstructured data. And so the reason why we want to unstructured data to use unstructured data for different Gen AI applications is because most companies, no matter the industry, no matter the size, they're producing up to 80% of data throughout their business activities that are unstructured, PDFs, um, PowerPoints, Word documents, Markdown, um, let's say Confluence, Wiki, all kinds of different documents that are unstructured. And a lot of the time, these documents contain business insights that are otherwise unavailable in structured data. I believe in 2019, Deloitte ran, ran a survey among different companies and different industries, and they have discovered that only about 18% of uh, companies were actually utilizing unstructured data. And that means that 72% of companies were not. Fast forward to today, five years later, now we have seen an incredible rise in LLM applications, all kinds of chatbots and RAG-based ap applications, and a lot of companies across different industries are now trying to utilize this type of data in all kinds of different applications. However, when trying to use PDFs, PowerPoints, Word documents, and all those, uh, all those other types of unstructured data, there are certain challenges that we see. Um, they need to be pre-processed and prepared in their raw format. They're not really usable in, in these types of applications. So what challenges do we see? The first one is that typically this type of data is scattered across the organization. So maybe you have your um, PDFs in an S3 bucket or Azure blob storage. Maybe you also have Confluence as a company wiki or maybe Notion and Slack messages and uh, Dropbox full of different types of documents and your emails, your sales records in Salesforce and so on and so forth. So you have the idea that everything is all over the place in different silos and there's, there's a multitude of these silos across the, any organization. So first, if we wanted to use this kind of data, we would need to figure out how to pull it out of all of those different sources. Next, of course, is the diversity of native file formats in which unstructured data is stored. One common example is a PDF, but then of course you have Word documents, CSV, Markdown, HTML files, all these types of files, all these types of formats, they require different approach to extracting text and other information out of those documents so you have to figure out how to deal with all these different file types. And finally, the cherry on top for all of this is that documents 
uh, structured documents, they come in an endless variety of layouts. You have multiple columns, uh, you have different um, reading order, you have tables, you have images, you have different designs and visual elements in those documents. And there is no quick and fast rule of how these documents are organized. There's so much different, um, there's so much diversity. And, and on top of that, you of course get all kinds of noise, especially if you're talking about scanned documents. So with that, you could build your own ETL pipelines to pre-process unstructured documents. And um, with uh, open source tools and a lot of expertise and a lot of resources, it is possible to do. So you would have to face the complexity of figuring out how to use different APIs to ingest the documents from all those different sources. You would have to build expertise in parsing documents with rule-based parsers for every uh, type of file, for every uh, file format. You would have to acquire expertise in working with image-based documents. So document, you would have to know how to apply OCR, document understanding model, how to handle edge, edge cases, how to run inference with those models and potentially how to fine tune those models to address your noisy documents, edge cases, and things like that. And then the next thing that you will have to consider is what the data model for the output would have to look like, because if you plan to utilize the text extracted from those documents, you would have to ensure that the outputs are consistent and standardized across different file types. And on top of that, of course, there's the usual scalability, maintenance, and so on and so forth. And there is an easier uh, solution to this problem, which I'm about to show you today. And this is using unstructured.io. Unstructured.io comes in three different flavors. There is an open source library that you can use to pre-process 25 different document types, PDFs, Word uh, documents, uh, PowerPoint, Markdown, HTML, and many more into a standardized JSON format. And this is great for quick prototyping, for figuring out what your POC is going to look like. Next, we have a serverless API, which has the same functionality as uh, open source. Plus, it offers better OCR and document understanding model uh, on the API side that will yield better quality results for complex image-based documents such as PDFs, PowerPoints. These are the models that we fine tune ourselves on all kinds of different noisy and complex and structurally unusual documents to produce the best uh, results. These, these models are not gonna be available in the open source version. And the API uh, allows you to scale your processing without uh, adding complexity in your code. Plus it is uh, SOC 2 compliant. So you get all this production grade functionality that you don't have in the open source library. Finally, there is an enterprise platform that will come later this year in about a few weeks. Right now it's, it's in beta and the platform will add um, scheduling, uh, multimodal cases support, and many other features that are not available in the server serverless API. So tonight, tonight, today, it depends where you are. Maybe for you, it's tonight. <laughs> so today, we're going to focus on the serverless API. And let's see what an ETL pipeline for unstructured data can look like with unstructured. So unstructured can connect to 20 different uh, sources where your unstructured data can be stored. So on the left side, you see S3, blob storage, Google Cloud storage, and a few other option, this, options. This is not a full list. These are just some examples where unstructured can connect to, to ingest unstructured data, such as PDFs, Word documents, and so on. 25 different file types that are supported by the 
library and the API and the platform, all of these can be extracted from those sources. Next, Unstructured will run those files through one of three transformation pipelines, high resolution pipeline, fast pipeline, and auto pipeline. And on the next slide, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about these pipelines and how they differ. But at the end, it doesn't matter which pipeline it is, you get a JSON output that contains document elements extracted from those documents and metadata. And this format is gonna be uniform across all kinds of file types. Uh, doesn't matter the source they're coming from. Uh, it's gonna be standardized uh, across all the file types and sources. Now at this point, if, you're, if you plan to use unstructured data to power your RAG application, you would want to chunk the documents and you would want to embed them with uh, your preferred embedding model. So uh, Unstructured offers options for chunking the documents and integrates with embedding providers such as OpenAI, Hugging Face, AWS uh, Bedrock. And at this point, you can upload the resulting documents into single store or any of the other destination connectors that Unstructured supports. Now, let's zoom in on the pipelines that Unstructured uses to transform the documents and let's see how they work and what happens under the hood. So first step in the transformation pipeline <clears throat> is to partition the documents. And Unstructured offers three different, sorry, <clears throat> pipelines, fast, high resolution, and auto. If you're working with uh, documents like Markdown, HTML, Word documents, fast strategy is gonna use rule-based parsers. It's incredibly fast and cheap, and you uh, can get results. You can get your JSON with extracted text from those documents very fast, very accurately. And um, it, But one thing though is that this strategy will also work for certain types of PDFs. If you have a PDF, a file that doesn't contain images or tables and it's just text, it may be possible to use this strategy to extract content from that type of PDF. And in that case, you will get the fastest ETL for PDFs um, out there. However, if you have complex image documents, uh, PDFs or PowerPoints, or maybe images, PNG, JPEG, with scans of certain documents and those documents contain um, Im images and tables and other visual elements and it's impossible to get uh, the text out of them in an easy way, then you would need to use high resolution strategy which is gonna employ OCR models, uh, document understanding models, traditional machine learning models to extract all the information out of those documents. So this strategy is gonna give you the best quality, the best accuracy for complex image-based documents. However, the trade-off is that it's gonna be slower than the FAST strategy. And finally, um, Unstructured has an auto strategy. This is the default. And in this case, Unstructured itself is gonna determine which document requires which strategy. And so if you send a batch of, a mixed batch of documents, some markdown, some PDF, some HTML, uh, so some of those documents will be processed with a fast strategy and the more complex documents are gonna be processed with a high resolution strategy. Now, at the end, regardless of the strategy, as I mentioned before, the output is gonna look the same. And this is um, an example. Here I'm taking a PDF from, it's a paper from archive. And on the right side, you can see a few um, document elements. This is uh, of course not the full JSON for this page. It's just the first few elements that are extracted from this document. And you can see uh, what the structure of such JSON can look like. All the document elements are gonna have a type. So for example, the first, oops, Go back. <laughs> the first element 
uh, is a title. It's uh, classified as a title. It has an element ID, which is unique, and it has the text. Who validates the validators in this case? And it comes with some metadata. So you have the language, the page number, the file name. Next, we have a narrative text, which is your paragraphs. Again, element ID, the extracted text. This one is a small uh, piece of text, text about the first mentioned researcher, and then so on and so forth. In this way, uh, by classifying different elements into uh, titles and narrative text, we preserve the structure of the document, no matter where it comes from. And in fact, we have um, a whole bunch of different elements that we identify titles, narrative text, list items, tables, images, footers, code snippets, and so on. So this helps to curate the data if you want to, uh, let's say at this point, throw away all of your footers, you can do that. If you want to use only uh, tables from your documents, again, you can do this. So this uh, helps with curating and filtering the data. Next, another way of preserving structure and hierarchy of the document is um, illustrated here. So we are zooming in on the same page. Here's a paragraph with a title. The first element, the green abstract is a title. It has an ID. Now the next element extracted is this whole paragraph and it's a narrative text. But you can see that it in the metadata, it has a parent ID which is the ID of the title element. So we know that this section belongs to, um, belongs under this uh, title. And this is gonna come in, hand, come in handy when we uh, chunk elements. So understanding the types of different elements, understanding the hierarchy of different elements within the doc helps not only with the curation of the data and filtering of the data, it's gonna come in handy with the chunking later. So to bring it all in one slide, we at atomize documents into logical units we call document elements. And so we preserve structure, preserve hierarchy. And in addition to that, as you have noticed already, we add additional metadata to each element. And in the examples before, you saw the language, you saw the page number, the file name. These are common types of metadata, but there's also a bunch of different meta metadata fields that are either element specific or document type specific. For example, if you have an email, then you may see uh, the sender, the recipient in the metadata. If you have text that contains links in there, you can see the link URLs in the metadata. And this is another thing that can help with data curation and filtering later on. One of the very commonly used metadata fields is uh, table specific. In this case, on the page, we have a small table. The extracted document element is gonna have the type element, type table. It's gonna have the text plain text extracted from the table, but also in the metadata, you can see that there is a text as HTML. And this is where we're gonna save this table extracted from an image-based document as plain HTML. And this way we can preserve the document, not, not the document, but the table structure so that the rows are where they're supposed to be, the columns are where they're supposed to be. So if I print out this HTML, this is what the table looks like. And with image-based documents such as PDFs, the accuracy of the text extraction is one of the first questions that people tend to ask. But I would like to say that um, when it comes to accuracy, unstructured ranks uh, at the same level as uh, tools from the cloud providers and the high performing text extraction tools. But at the same time, we track a few other metrics. So as I mentioned before, we are training our own OCR and document understanding models that we um, make available at the API level. And for these models, we obviously uh, track 
text extraction accuracy, but at the same time, we measure the table structure correctness. Uh, we make sure that the columns and rows and nested table structure is correct as it should be, as it was in the document. We also track text reading order to make sure that not only do we extract correct text, but also the document makes sense. So again, bringing it together, you get from 25 different file types from 20 different sources, you get a standardized output that is a that is JSON that contains document elements that preserve uh, document structure, hierarchy, and it's loaded with different types of metadata. Now, this is the first step of the ETL for unstructured documents. First, you partition it, any kind of document, you partition it into this JSON. If we wanted to use the output for the RAG application, the next step would be chunking. Unstructured offers several smart chunking strategies, and we even uh, published a paper about it. So if you would like to read the paper, go ahead and scan the QR code. I'm gonna leave this slide um, here for a little bit. The main issue with chunking is that if you treat the document as plain text and you want to split it into smaller chunks so that they fit your requirements or your context window of uh, an embedding model, if you approach it in a naive manner and just split by a number of characters, you are risking splitting sentences in the middle and uh, interrupting the information flow. If you employ some something more complicated like recursive chunking, then um, you are unlikely to split a sentence in the middle or read the word, but at this, but you may still interrupt the information flow. You or you may end up mixing content from different topics in the same chunk. Uh, with unstructured, as you saw earlier, the document is coming out of the partitioning step. It's already split into smaller segments. So at this point, these segments are still not chunks because you may have different requirements for your chunk size. You may have the hard maximum. You may want to have a hard minimum. Maybe you want to, uh, you still may want to split some of the larger paragraphs. You still may want to merge some of the smaller elements. For example, if you have a list and each list uh, list item is only one sentence, perhaps you want to have a chunk that is, uh, um, that is a combination of those list items. And how do we do this? So essentially, Unstructured offers chunking strategies that guarantee that the content is not going to be mixed from with different topics. And this helps to ensure that the chunks that you retrieve are going to be more self-contained and that results in a better performance. So for example, if you choose a by title strategy, this is a strategy in which large pieces can still be split into two or however, however more needed to fit the hard max requirements. But uh, if you want to merge um, smaller chunks by title, strategy guarantees that content from different sections will never be merged. Uh, then by page, uh, this is a similar strategy, but in this case, the dividers are the pages. If your documents are structured so that each page contains unique information that should never be merged with content from other pages, you can ensure this by using by page strategy. And then by similarity strategy uh, is useful when you have a document that has a lot of par text paragraphs, but no clear structure, no clear titles and section dividers, but the topic changes from one place to another. And in this case, what Unstructured will do uh, before merging two small chunks, it will run a quick embedding to check how similar the small chunks are before merging them. If they are similar in topic, then they can be merged. If they're not similar, they will not be merged. And you will set up the threshold for this. And once you have your chunks, the next step in the preparation for RAG is to embed the document and unstructured support. Um, three different providers, OpenAI, um, Plugin Face and AWS Bedrock. I don't have a slide on the providers, but this is 
pretty straightforward. You just choose the provider and choose the model. Now, let's see how this pipeline would look like if we wanted to load the documents from an S3, uh, AWS S3 bucket, and finally into single store. This is uh, a simplified version of the diagram that you saw earlier. So it comes down to just five steps. We're gonna ingest data from an S3 bucket. We're gonna partition it with unstructured. We're gonna use smart chunking with unstructured generate embeddings, for example, with hug and face, and then load the results into single store. So, and this is what I'm gonna show you today in the demo part. And that's where we're gonna be switching now. But one more thing before we do that, if you wanted to, uh, I'm gonna have a link to the GitHub repo for this example later in the slides, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be in the recording somewhere. Uh, but if you want to reproduce the, the example, if you want to run it with your data, you're going to need to get unstructured API key and API URL, which you can get if you sign up for unstructured um, API. You, uh, you get a free trial, which lasts 14 days, two weeks, and you get a thousand pages per day for free. So if you wanted to try out the unstructured API, you can do this um, in the next uh, 14 days for free. Uh, I'm gonna be using single store locally. And for this reason, I'm gonna be using the uh, Docker container. So if you want to run this example, you're gonna need to install Docker. And I'm using an S3 bucket. So uh, if you wanna use it with your bucket, you'll need to upload some PDF files into it. Now with that, let me switch to to PyCharm, where I have all my notebooks and examples. Right. Okay. So before we jump into the pipeline illustrating single store, um, sorry, S3 to single store ETL, I wanted to show you quickly how you would process a single file. Uh, in this notebook, I'm commenting out the um, installation of libraries because I have them in the uh, virtual environment. But if you wanted to run it as an independent notebook or on Google Collab, you would need to install unstructured, in this case, all docs. Um, and I'm insta installing a utility library to just load my environment uh, variables. Setting up connection to unstructured serverless API with the Python SDK is as easy as these one, two, three, four, five lines of code. Now I'm using Python, but if you are allergic to Python, you can uh, you can use JavaScript or TypeScript SDK, or you can use curl and send a post request directly to the endpoint. That's totally up to you. My preference is Python, and so that's what I'm using here. And I have some documents here. I have some emails, I have some HTML, some markdown. I think actually, let me zoom in a little bit. This might be, um, oh, there we go. Maybe it's gonna be better this way. And let's start with a markdown file. Um, to pre-process a single markdown file, so I say, I specify the file name, I open the file, and I send it to the um, API to, uh, to get the partition elements. Now, this is all um, with default. I don't specify the partitioning strategy here. It's going to be uh, auto, in which case it's uh, unstructured. It's going to determine that because it's a markdown file, it's going to use fast strategy. It's going to process it and return me return to me the JSON with elements. I can get them by getting response.elements. And let's see what they look like. So these are the elements that we get. Let's see what the original file looked like actually. So this is a very small markdown file and it's from Langchain documentation. So it has some headers, it has some paragraphs, it has links, uh, list, 
but that's it. There's nothing too complicated. So this is what we should expect to see in the uh, elements. I can see it. there's a list item. And for the list item in metadata, I can see there's a category depth because lists can be nested. Mm, something. Oh, there are some links that are, have been added to metadata from a paragraph. And we can see so reference documentation was linked to this place. So this, this is what you can expect to get from any type of document. In this case, we, we know that this is a markdown, that this com comes from the file called index.md. And as you, can, as you saw, there is some additional metadata like links, category depth for, for list items. We can see what kind of elements we got from this particular document and we got title, narrative, text, and list item, which checks out because we don't really have anything else here. We have the titles and paragraphs, which paragraphs are translated to narrative text and list items, nothing else. Now, this is a very simple example. Let's move, move on to an image-based document and processing an image-based document is gonna be exactly the same except this is a PDF document. And here I'm specifying in the partition parameters a couple more arguments. I want uh, to explicitly use high resolution strategy and I want to get the images from this PDF as um, base 64 images including, included into the metadata. So this is uh, the parameter that's gonna do that. Everything else is the same, I get the elements, if we go to the PDF elements, again, you can see that we have the narrative text and metadata. And here's an image, for example. It doesn't have much text in it, but we get the image base 64 included in the metadata. If we um, count the in categories, the types of elements that we received, we're gonna get titles, narrative text, some uncategorized text, images, tables, code snippets, formulas in this one. Now for the table elements, as I mentioned earlier, here's a table element. You get the text ext extracted from the table as text, but you also get the text as HTML. And if we scroll further, printing out, this is what a table extracted from a PDF file can look like. Now, for the images, as I mentioned, uh, I opted in to extract image base 64 into, in the metadata. And the reason for that is that currently with images, um, with the API, if the images like this one, for example, contains no identifiable text, um, there is some text here on this, I guess, micros microscope. I think that's microscope, um, but I wouldn't be able to, to parse what that is. And then um, OCR model was not able to parse it either. So in this case, I want to preserve the images as is, as uh, base 64 images in the metadata. And you can see that this image has no text. In the platform, we're gonna have an option to generate captions and descriptions for images. But in the API, this is one way you could work with this type of images. But if an image contains text, so is, as in the next example here, for example, uh, image element 12, there is some uh, diagram. In this case, uh, API can extract the text from that image, but also preserve the uh, base 64 image in the metadata. Again, in the enterprise platform, we're gonna have many more options to work with these types of images. Now, this is one way to um, work with uh, different documents. However, when you're parsing documents with the SDK this way, you go with the document one by one, and it's not very practical, especially if we wanted to have production grade pipelines. And so I'm gonna show you now how to do this with uh, ingestion and uh, partitioning multiple documents and build a whole pipeline to ultimately also load things into single store. All right, I'm gonna to switch to this next notebook. Uh, in this case, 
because I'm using single store and I'm also, also going to be using hug and face embeddings. There are two extra dependencies that I'm going to need. Otherwise, it's more or less the same. In this case, I limited to the dependencies for structure to S3 and PDF, but um, depending on the type of documents you process, you can modify that. Um, first, I'm gonna uh, create a database and a table in um, my single store database and a table. I'm get, again, I'm using Python and um, you can use just a, you know, a, you can run a com command in the ter terminal if you want to. Um, I'm setting up my password, of oh, password, <laughs> password. Um, and I am creating a table with a specific schema. Let me show you the schema. Um, so this is what a schema is gonna look like. If you uh, partition a document, you can see that these are the types of, uh, um, these are the things that you can expect in a JSON document. The, we're gonna have an example of a schema in our documentation very, very soon. The, this connector to single store has been added only two weeks ago. And so we have not added this example to the documentation yet, but it's coming. Uh, and normally one thing that you would have to change in this schema is the uh, number of dimensions for your embeddings, because this depends on the model that you're going to be using to embed the text into um, vector representations. So in my case, this is uh, 768, but this number can differ in your example. But other than that, it should be exactly uh, like this. Now, uh, once I created my table and I made sure that it's healthy and not starting, uh, I can start with my pipeline. Alternatively, I commented out here uh, another way to create the table with Docker Compose, in which case you can set up the weight and not have to check manually, but that's totally up to you. And let's get to the pipeline. A bunch of imports that we're gonna use from unstructured.ingest. Pipelines for ETL in unstructured, they are constructed from different configs. So as you can see, this is a single pipeline and there's a number of configs that you need to set up in order to, for, for it to make sense. These configs do not have to be in this exact order. Um, it's just makes sense. It just makes sense to me to have them in this order. And let me explain what these configs describe. First, we have a processor config. This is where you set up the general behavior of your pipeline, like how verbose you want your logs to be, how many processes you want, um, things like, let's say, um, how many connections, if you want to preserve temporary downloads, things like that. Next, you, I have several configs that control the ingestion from S3 bucket. I uh, define where the location of my documents is. So my this is the name of my S3 bucket. The downloader config, this is where I can change uh, the, the temporary download destination if I want to. For me, the defaults usually work. And then finally, the most important one is the connection config. This is where you set up your authentication. Now that we have connected to the S3 bucket, Next step is to partition the documents that we are ingesting from S3. I'm going to be using uh, the partition by API flag set to true because I want to use the API because I want to get the highest possible quality of text extraction. And in this case, you need to provide, again, your authentication option, your API key that and your uh, unstructured URL that you can get once you sign up in your personalized dashboard. I don't specify any additional parameters here, but if you wanted to, this is where you could choose your strategy. This is where you can choose uh, maybe to exclude some of the metadata, and maybe you wanted to choose a specific model to use uh, on your files and uh, some other options. Once the files are partitioned, I want to chunk them. I'm going with the byte title chunking strategy and I'm specifying that I want the maximum 
um, size of every chunk to be 512 characters and the minimum size to be 200, which means that chunks that are smaller than 200 characters are going to be combined into a larger chunk unless they are from different sections, in which case they will not be. Finally, I want to embed the chunks that I have created with a model from Hugging Face. And as a last step, I want to upload the resulting JSONs into my, into my single store database. So uh, the last configs define the uploading step of the pipeline. Um, we have the config that controls the connection with authentication options. We have the stager config that checks that everything is staged correctly. And then we have the uploader config in which you say, say into which table you want to upload the resulting elements. And this is it. This is all it takes, no matter how many documents I have in that S3 bucket, this is all it takes to process them all, partition them, extract metadata, uh, understand the document structure, um, then it chunk them, taking into account that document structure, embed them with a model of your choice, in this case from, from Hugging Face, and upload them into your destination of choice. This is all it takes. This is, uh, oh, this is one, two, 45 lines of code, I I think it's not too bad. So once I do this, um, it goes through partitioning, chunking, embedding, and uploading to uh, results into single store. To test my outputs, I first I'm gonna just do a quick sanity check that I have in, uh, as many elements as I expect. And I get this number just by looking at the logs here. So the first document resulted in 172 elements, the second 173. So I should have 345 elements loaded into my uh, table, uh, which is the case. And now finally, let's do some retrieval. Ultimately, we want to use these documents in our RAG application. And for that, we need to be able to retrieve documents similar to the user query. When doing so, I want to embed the query with the exact same model that I used to embed the original document, because otherwise you're gonna get some nonsensical results. Uh, once I embed the query, I'm just gonna uh, return texts, file names, um, of the elements with the highest score for similarity, which I measure with the dot product between the embeddings that is recorded in my database and the embedding that I got just here by embedding this individual user query. So let's see how this works. The documents that I have in my S3 bucket, they are about integrated pest management for change. Usually people demo things with uh, RAG papers on archive, but I decided to go for pest control to spice things up. And so let's see, pest control through mating disruption pheromones. Oops, let me scroll better. And we get decent results. So at this point, this is a very basic setup. The ETL is there, how you retrieve documents, whether you want to do similarity search, whether, whether you want to use metadata to um, have a more fine-grained, more precise retrieval, whether you want to do any other um, kind of retrieval, this is totally up to you. At this point, the involvement of unstructured ends that uh, an unstructured only sits on the side of data pre-processing, delivering that data from different sources, from different locations, from different file types, all into the uniform format and into a single place. And at that point, you still have decisions to make how to uh, improve your RAG, how to build your RAG, but this is outside of uh, the ETL side of things. Now, if you would like to try this uh, example, 
the repo is public on GitHub. Uh, as I mentioned before, you would need to use the unstructured API key that you can get by signing up to un um, on the unstructured website. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the demo. I hope you enjoyed the talk and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. I'm gonna keep this slide for just a few seconds longer and then I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Thank you. That was such a nice session. I really loved the paper. So uh, feel free to share the link with me and I can actually include it in our resources that we send out after every webinar. So Akmal, do you see any questions that actually caught your eye? Uh, there's about nine open questions still. I think uh, they are best answered by Maria. I think you and I would have a hard time to uh, uh, answer them. But uh, uh, let's have a look. Um so if I just go back and uh, it, we, we use the FIFO queue, first in, first out. So David has a question. He says, helpful presentation. He says, when you have a moment, can you discuss parsing multi-page PDF financial documents, such as income statements, where the column headings are only on the first page? Many thanks. So I assume that that's, uh, it's like you have an exception, okay? Because there's some information that only appears once, for example, uh, and then you have to deal with that in a special way, for example, and then the rest maybe can be processed in the standard way. I'm assuming you can handle that, Maria. Um, so if I understand correctly, so you have a document which is uh, where the table is split uh, across multiple pages, but only the first page has the, the uh, headings. You can merge those tables um, you can merge to, it, it will be a little bit of manual work, but you can merge those tables. They, they're gonna be extracted as separate tables. Okay. All right. Um, it's, uh, Mahesh has got a question. It says, not sure how JSON will look from zip and audio files, any idea? So I'm guessing there, these are the some yeah. types yeah. that he wants to deal with. What would it look like? Uh, would you be able to, I mean, would your uh, platform be able to handle those? I'm assuming yes again. Yes. So for the zip files, uh, essentially what happens is zip file contains other types of files. So for those types of files will be processed. We do have a bit of a discussion whether we should return them as one JSON or with one JSON per document. So um, I, I believe at the moment it's one JSON, but there are cases where we may want to split it in per document basis. For the audio, this is something that is going to be supported in the uh, in the platform, and the audio uh, you're going to be getting a transcript. Okay, great. Uh, there's a, a question here from Esmat who says, "Why JSON stroke BSON format is not in the source? What if I want to use my data from MongoDB documents?" So, I mean, there is a, a product that supports JSON documents anyway. Okay, so. So you mean that you want to use, you want to ingest JSON documents? Uh, I'm guessing so, yes, because that's what Mongo deals with. Uh, so Mongo's, I mean, you store JSON, it knows it as BSON. I mean, that's what it's kind of backend uh, it deals with. Mm -hmm. um, we currently don't support any um, arbitrary JSON as input. Uh, we do have an option to import JSON, but this one is um, to import JSONs that we have partitioned and stored, and then and then you yeah. know eventually later you want to re-import them. But again, we do have some functionality in the works to uh, partition certain types of JSON if we know the schema in this case, because um, this could be useful. For example, one. But one of the requests that we sometimes have is to partition Jupyter notebooks. Uh, and that, that's an interesting use case and we want to support it. But if there are any other specific types of JSON that you want to have supported, um, let us know. Uh, we have a very uh, friendly Slack channel that you can join and people are open to ideas. And if you mention that you need this, this specific kind of JSON, uh, is a game, game changer for you. I'm sure the team is going to be happy to hear about it and uh, we'll put it on the roadmap. Great. 
Um, Yukti, I'll hand it over to you. We're almost at the top of the hour, so I, I'm guessing it's <laughs> almost time to finish. Uh, but as you said earlier, uh, if there are still outstanding questions, um, there will be a follow-up, okay? So we'll try and get those uh, uh, answered as well. Uh, and uh, as far as I can see, there are no anonymous questions. So uh, whoever has asked uh, should get back a reply. Yeah, you right. can feel free to find me on Twitter and send me your anonymous questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so nice of you. Uh, everyone, I have put an uh, email ID that you can reach out to in case you want to uh, have your questions answered. In case we don't get back to you, if you miss your question, please let us know. Feel free to email us. So we uh, this can we can conclude the Q&A session now. So just quick notes before I announce today's raffle winner. Akmal, can we please go to the slide that has the upcoming webinars? You're on mute. Yeah, bear with me. Let me just uh, pull that up. So I've uh, opened up so many tabs on the uh, the browser <laughs> whilst I was trying to look for some of these answers. So there we go. I think. Thank uh, you so much. Uh, uh, for everyone that has questions regarding the recording, yes, it will be available. It will be emailed to you after the session and. Uh, you can also find the recordings to our previous sessions by going to our resources page. So do feel free to check it out. Uh, so we have amazing sessions that are coming up tomorrow. We have uh, migrating your data set from rock set to single store. Uh, it's tomorrow. Please feel free to try out a uh, single store tomorrow by signing up and attending this webinar. We will explain everything de by detail by detail and uh, I hope to see you there. Uh, on 18th, we have how to do full text search with single store and on July 22nd, single store as best operational DB for AI. Uh, thanks so much for attending this session and I hope you uh, signed up for today's raffle and uh, we are going to announce the winner now after a random draw. Um, so the announcement that everyone's been waiting for, today's raffle winner goes to Luna Raj Pandari. He is the VP of Data and Technology at cars.com in Chicago. Thanks so much for joining, sir, and uh, signing up. Uh, so for everyone, please do not give up. We are going to announce one more AirPods winner and Meta's Ray-Ban winner by the end of the day for anyone who has tried out today's demo with a Maria's code. And you can sign up at the link that's present on your screen. I have also put everything in the chat and you can create a workspace using our code and be eligible and be entered to win. And I want to thank our speakers, Maria and Akmal today. I hope you guys uh, had a good time during this webinar and with the amazing questions we had. So... And everyone, thanks for joining. Your energy really matters to us. And have a great rest of the day, great rest of the night, wherever you are. And I hope to see you guys soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.